Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Pathfinder Kingmaker. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today as we do companion quests, I think, maybe, potentially, probably, most likely. The, the title of the video might give it away. Although, these are big videos, so maybe it doesn't give away what I am about to do. Because at the beginning, and all this sort of stuff. Last episode, we dealt with Amory's side quest, um, so that's done. Uh, we also have uh, to wait over there, but we had another one. Octavia's mother. Uh, she, wh wh where, where is that? Oh, it's, oh, that's right. It's in Petax. It's down here. Oh, somewhere. Is that the one over there? Uh, dispose of the river pirates. That is, I mean, we are going to do that, but that is not it. Uh, that's for Rigongar. Wait, what? How about that? It seems Octavia comes from a noble family. She's the daughter of Marciones della Fiorni, who currently lives in Pitax. Uh, and why she... Yeah, we need to go to Pitax, but... Oh, I know what it is. No, I can't know what it is. I was going to say, we just don't have access to the area yet. Or we don't see the area, rather. Um, but I don't think that's the case, because things just show up. So... I... Maybe it's over there? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, can we cross the river somewhere? Somewhere? Well, we could. Or up here, so... Let's go to that mysterious spot over there. So, first off, we go over here to Giant's Palm. And the moment we leave the area... We got a wicked hill over there. Such wickedness. Uh, that is a waste. Uh, but I suppose I'm doing it. I'm back over here. I, yeah, it's, this is close enough to to our kingdom where we can take care of um, take care of uh, kingdom business if we need to. This hill looks exactly like many of its brothers in the area, yet it exudes a sinister and frightening feeling. Uh, yes, from from not the looks of it, just from other things that it exudes. It's magic, obviously. Magic exudance. Uh, also, we're exhausted, which is a bit of a problem. So we should be able to rest. Can I rotate it? Mm. I can't rotate these. Okay, that looks good. It doesn't mean we're going to be able to sleep here. There's just some cultists over there. You know, the huge. Nothing, nothing, no biggie. Oh yeah, this is great. Uh, now we menage over here. Uh, no cooking? Mm, no, yes, cooking. Okay, uh, for a hearty meal, uh, by all means. You are disappointed in Shellen, as I am in Torog. Listen closely, and maybe you, too, will hear a barely audible whisper. Perhaps Grotus will speak to you, too. No one is talking to me, Harren. And if I start hearing whispers, it means I have problems with my head, not with my faith. I... Well... The ramble is there, but this one actually, I... They should all be like this. This one makes... This one makes the other ones look a little bit silly, to be honest. Uh, no! Don't raise that thing! Amateurs, who taught you to hold rituals like this? Uh, well, they're all dead. We can save. And uh, we are going to push forward, because obviously that is aggressive. Uh, and we're going to murder it. Unfortunately, Harim is at the forefront. Nope, Valerie's at the forefront. Uh, Valerie is taking damage. Let's get Harim at the side so we can get a little bit of a flank going. This is a patient shadow. I, I do... I. I want my shadows to be patient with me. I'm not really sure. Is it a shadow of a patient? Because that also is weird. Uh, well, there it is. That is that is what happened. We got Charon cultists that are dead now. With a scythe over here on that Charon cultist. And something... Oh, I saw somebody flee, though. Melted pliers with the Tectonic League's brand. Page from a cultist's diary. What won't I do for you, the unparalleled Pax Grumeta, uh, Grumetra, 
pretending to be a cultist of Sharon just to get them to help me. To be honest, all I know about the deity is his symbol, a skull with coins covering the eye sockets. I made the logical assumption that it was somehow related to death and, and started mumbling something about death and fate at the coven meeting and they just took me for one of their own. Three years studying at the Academy of the Arts can't take that away. Even if most, I just learned to ignore the dashes because most of them, they don't mean anything. Uh, even if um, most of my time there was more revelry than studying. Unfortunately, Charon's followers aren't really of much help. Demons serve their DT, but these dumb cultists don't know how to make the demons obey their summoner. And I can't just tell them, a demon stole the soul of my favorite writer and I need to get it back and I'll never never know who murder who the murderer in the last issue of Shadows of Absalom was. I have to constantly improvise and make things up as I go, but at least I'm good at that. Well, th there we go. A fitting end for a charlatan, maybe, potentially. I, uh, I We don't know. That is That was a thing. Uh, okay, well, leave, leave and uh, that will move on. I am curious about that. I am curious about the Mysterious Shrine, but I am pretty sure I'm never going to be able to figure it out. Because the other ones... Uh, unless unless we get a quest. Unless it's like we find it, and all of a sudden... Uh, all of a sudden, uh, we get... Um, oh, we didn't avoid that. All of a sudden, we get a quest marker. Or not a quest marker, rather, but like a quest description. Because Lindsay, she has insight into everything. Lindsay knows how to complete the game, uh, but I don't. Uh, so let's see. We have a cultist fighter over there. We got some fighters. Let's attack that rogue over there because he smells. Let's get a couple of fireballs up in there because we can. That sounds good. And uh, we also have a greater enraged owlbear. I think that's not going to be of great use. Fireball did not hurt our own, which is a good thing. Uh, that guy over there, there's another archer. Let's see if I can get another fireball up in there in a way that doesn't murder us. Although it's unlikely because of the time it takes for Octavia to actually get through things. I think, I think we did well. Uh, let's get you to shoot that. Come on, Gilladel. Good. It's just this bear now. I don't know who, the, who summoned this bear, but... I don't know. We're good. Attack of opportunity there and a kill. Good. I th told you we were good. Let's leave. Uh, I'll see what we have. Just some money. Some things. A breastplate stretch. Uh, the best the breastplate. And we got some of this. Some pearls. Composite longbow. Those are always good. Relatively decent loot. It's not amazing. Breastplate plus two. Hmm. Okay. Well, it is amazing. The breastplate plus two is actually very uh, expensive. I think like it's like six thousand each. The plus two are very expensive. Okay. Moving on. Mysterious shrine. A group of megaliths. I. I. It fa this is fascinating. This game does treat. Uh. Uh. Treat uh, megalith as a. As the, what it originally means, which is the big stone, it just literally means big stone in in Latin, but uh, not in English. It does not. L that is a single word that means the historical context. Like it's like calling medieval. Um, it's like saying anything that is like you know, you're in your middle years. Like for example, you're you're mid mid aged uh, middle aged. That's the word. Is it middle aged? What's the word for like somebody in their thirties, forties, or fifties? Anyway, uh, 30s maybe not, uh, but anyway, 40s, 50s. Uh, middle, he's middle-aged. Anyway, the point is, it's like calling them medieval. Or, you're in your medieval years, and I'm like, what? No, you're not. What the heck? Anyway, this is no better. Is it going to be any... Yeah, there's no clue whatsoever. Time erases the blood spilled here on Grief Leaves On and the Queen and whatnot. Yep, there's basically, that's just a give up right there. That's, uh, that's, yeah, we're never going to do that. I mean, I could do that. But I would have to look it up online, and uh, maybe we'll do it. Although I doubt it. Don't don't get your hopes up. Sorry. I mean, we may. Um, I don't know. Well, don't, still, don't get your hopes up, because there really is zero clues. It's the basically the same encounter as before. We didn't fight anything this time. We, did we fight things in the other one? 
Because I think we did. Uh, anyway, we're going... That takes us back over there. We're going over here. We have the Carnival Glade. Which is lovely. Uh, we have something over there. Okay, it's still early on. We have a, another random encounter. Please get done. Oh, shut up. <laughs> They're easy to kill, at least. And there's loot in it. But all I wanted was to go back to... To a home. Oh, it's the same. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of cultists around here. That fighter over there is doing Kamehameha something or other. Oh, no, they're turning into a bear. That's, that, that explains things. Uh, okay, control fireballs then. And they're all put together. Uh, let's do that on you. Did I do it? I think I did. Fireball up, uh, in there. Another control fireball. Uh, I need to pause the game to see their health. That's a lot of death coming in there. That's another controlled fireball. We got a heal. And uh, we're going to do that. So everybody gets healed as well. Probably should get Giladel up in here. No, she got healed. Good. That's that archer. Get Giladel to shoot over there. Oh, we don't need that. Everything is dead. Great. Are they transforming back? No, it's just how that works. They, be, they stay transformed, as we have found before, much to my dismay, because the that loot that I couldn't get with whatever that was. Is it the same exact loot? Mm, I would say maybe. Best breastplate plus two it is? Well, sort of. Not, not quite. Not quite. But good enough. Anyway, we're going back because we have something new in our kingdom management thing. Cults dedicated to dangerous dark deities. This game has, this game, really. If you if you want to role play somebody who, you know, follows a dangerous dark deity, uh, you're you're this game hates you forever and wants you dead a lot. Um, nope. What is this one? The artisans lost. The same talented artisan that had, uh, that had taken up residence in the kingdom distinguished themselves again with another ma masterpiece. Alas, some scoundrels robbed the workshop. And uh, we sent Kanara to go in there. Maybe somebody else to go in there? Uh, Valerie could... Uh, well, Cirrus can go in there for extra stability. And uh, we're not skipping. Well, there it is. You know, taking care of business. It's always good. So we're just exploring P-Tax for right now. And... Because uh, we need to, obviously. And hopefully... We don't need to go... That's curious. Hopefully we don't need to go into the carnival, or not the carnival, into the next area, and I can just compartmentalize all the different areas. Uh, I say P-Tax because I think we're in P-Tax at the moment. Uh, these guys are getting old, by the way. It's not the third encounter that... No, it is the, the third encounter that I find that it's the same. So that's the last encounter that I find that is the same, by the way. I promise you, that is the last one. Uh, Valerie is taking quite a... A lot of damage and we're out of fireballs as well so you know uh let's see what i can do here good shot let's get you to shoot back there i wonder if octavia is doing sneak attacks well she's not definitely not doing one there she is she did 30 damage on a sneak attack and as you can hear it was effective murder and uh destruction for sure all these people are brought to justice by the, by my hand. It's not also not justice. I mean, uh, it's self-defense. Is it just to murder people who want to murder you? In 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 real life, no. Uh, in the setting, I mean, I mean in the setting. Would that be would that be something that I could claim to be lawful, or would that be something that I that I would say is chaotic? Because I think that's chaotic. Not that chaotic isn't just, mind you. Law isn't justice. It's just, you know, law. Uh, we are, uh, however... No, no, we're not going to do this. Nope. We are, however, traveling in enemy territory here. And as you can see, I can't go back. Huh. Oh, not... Oh, there we go. We evaded that. That's what I like to see. I also need to sleep. Oh my god. There's no way back. 
Hmm. What should I do? Well, we need to sleep. Um, and this is a dead end. It's a complete dead end. But we can just keep going. We don't need to sleep right now. We're gonna need to go up there. Yeah. No. I really wasn't expecting, like, it's still in the same area. Once you go over there, it's the uh, it's basically you're done. But we're good. There's something else to this. Well, let's go this way. My God. Are we supposed to level up off of those or something? Ooh, lucky. Lucky me. I knew it. Irovetti, that scumball, invited us. Oh, what? Yes, he invited us. What What do you mean, invited us? Did that complete? Because, oh, we got it. Uh, Old friend, the rush light. Invited us to determine to disgrace our queen and make her um, appear and fit to rule. Oh, that was... Uh, I didn't... Was that what... I... Okay, I'll read it. I knew it. Ido... S -s writes Lindsay. Irofeti, that scumball, invited us to the tournament for a reason. To disgrace our queen and make her appear and fit to rule. That guy can be trusted in one thing only. He'll never miss an opportunity to, sla to stab you in the back. Um. Well, the tournament... That's... I didn't... Lindsay, is, she's on drugs. The tournament is over. King Hirovetti wasn't very friendly, but overall, everything was settled peacefully. Perhaps this invitation wasn't a dirty trick after all. Yeah, you see why, what I mean? Uh, I can't believe that. There must be some kind of catch, or it wouldn't be Hirovetti. I think we'll be hearing some news from Pitax in the near future. And that's a quest completion. I mean, if that's a quest completion, it might be because we have news over here. Undead Rising, Triumph. The general scouts lured the undead out into the open, where they were flanked by our main troops and surrounded. The general is being celebrated celebrated for a brilliant victory. Thank you, Amory. Uh, and Lindsay brought bad news, which probably means it's good news, because it's Lindsay. We don't, we don't like Lindsay. Do we like Lindsay? Sound out in the comments. <laughs> that's, 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 that's justice for you. Okay, uh, that's pretty good. We, uh, want to at least connect these two areas as much as possible. Hmm. I'm not really sure what I want to do here. Because going back... What? Oh. Uh, because going back is not going to be as simple as crossing the river. Or rather, it is going to be as simple as crossing the river. The problem is uh, crossing the river is a pain in the butt. Uh, also, I do want to go over there. Uh, the bad news can wait. Uh, the good... I'm sorry. The good news can wait. As we well know. So we're just going to look around a little bit around here. Oh, there's a passage over here. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, I really do want to go. I mean, since we're here. So where does that go? It's this way. Gotcha. Um, I really do want to go to the... Oh, another mysterious shrine. Lovely. The ones that don't have anything for me, because they don't have anything for me. Also have Hemlock Island. We could go there. Hemlock is a very important... Culturally important... Oh, I should have read the description. Culturally important, um... And historically culturally important, uh... For, for it's, well, it's really a bush, but still. Reaching the wooded isle, we stopped to look around. The locals living around the lake fully believed the place was cursed. Day and night, colored lights supposedly appeared around the island, and some brave souls would even watch them fly over the water. The local legend said that anyone who saw those lights would definitely disappear, if not that night, then within the month for sure. We didn't see any lights at all, though. The island seemed forlorn and completely uninteresting. Silent, gloomy pines loomed over the gray rocky shore, a narrow path disappeared into the woods, but we decided to follow the path and explore the mysterious island. Whoever made the path clearly didn't use it often. We could barely make it out among the ferns. We had to walk single file along the path as branches from the crowded bushes grabbed at our sleeves and backpack straps, only to hit the next person in line once we had passed. The forest grew taller and thicker and ever darker. The air suddenly grew intense, intensely humid as Clouds of milky white, incredibly thick fog flowed. The, the commas confused me tremendously. 
anyway, uh, as the incredible, basically the air grew humid as the fog flowed up from the ground. And believe me, dear reader, when I say incredibly thick with quotes, uh, which she's definitely not meaning as a dirty joke. We're not talking like how an innkeeper might talk up his soup or the other thing that you were thinking. It became impossible to see past our own noses and it was like our ears had been stuffed with cotton. The air itself became so dense it was like walking through water. We had to navigate by touch and we could only uh, we could move only half as fast as we had been going. Gilladel, who had been walking last, was forced to stop. With great difficulty, she could barely make out the muffled and worried voices of her friends ahead. Something had to be done, but what? Gilladel decided to break through the fog and try to catch up to everybody else. Of course she did, but she failed. G Gilladel continued forward through the fog, but progress became more difficult with each step. She felt a sudden movement of air to the left before she flew forward, having been pushed hard in the back. Failing to keep her balance, Gilladel fell into the sticky mud. At that moment, she just barely spotted a pair of pale hands reaching out, grab her, or I suppose, reach out, grab her bag, and disappear back into the fog. What does that mean, grab her bag? Did I lose my things? The fog finally began to clear, and soon there was no trace of it. Gilladel looked back, and her friends were nothing, uh, nowhere to be seen. But up ahead, she could just make out a blinking, welcoming light. As Gilladel approached the light source, it quickly became clear that the light was a bonfire Soon uh, that blinked. Soon, Gilladel entered a brightly lit clearing and saw all of us. But why, then, did no one jump up to greet her, or give a welcoming yell, or a hug, or even offer a cup of hot tea? Why had everyone frozen? Why? Why? Imagine Gilladel's surprise when she finally saw why her appearance had caused such a strange reaction. It seemed she hadn't been missing at all. She'd been sitting with us all by... Uh, by, well, by the fire, watching her exact copy emerge from the forest. Yes, dear reader, just imagine it. Two copies of the Queen met in... That's the best the best thing. Uh, two copies of the Queen met in the clearing, seemingly identical, but which of the two was real? Uh, the, I knew that because... The, the, Lindsay knew that because of the way she's describing it, which is weird. She shouldn't know that. The Queen sitting by the fire said, How can there be any doubt? I'm the real Queen, of course. Look, I've got my bag with all my things. And what did the Queen who walked out of the forest answer? Uh, well, I can tell you exactly how many meals we carried with us down to the last pack of hard tack. Can she do the same? A deafening silence hung in the air. One could hear the thoughts churning through our brains. Although one couldn't. But anyway, and then the... The Gilladel, sitting by the fire, laughed in a strange voice. She stood up and began rising into the air. Question mark, exclamation mark. The, ma the mask dropped, and we saw a short, pale man with blonde hair and parrot-like wings with bright feathers. We all went after him together, but Gilladel held onto him most tightly. Her hands gripped the Joker's... That That's... Not really a Joker, but anyway, it's Joker's wing in an iron grip. Then an ear-piercing whistle sounded from all around us, and stones began raining, raining on us from above. The imposter was aided by his winged kin, who grabbed him by the hands and began pulling him up. We didn't give up, by, but in the end, we were overpowered. There were just too many. Dear reader, they quickly reclaimed our prisoner from us. Soaring into the air and shaking their fists at us, they flew off. We sat a long time around the fire, laughing and chatting about how Gilladel cleverly dispelled the illusion. And when morning came, we looked around at the rainbow-colored feathers left behind by our uninvited guests. I noticed... And as we looked around, I noticed one of them had lost a valuable bracelet in the fight. We had been... We had ended up with a trophy, at least. Uh, well, I suppose that's good, because I have no idea what just happened. Uh, I hope I hope you have. We have Golden Vision. Let's see if it's valuable or not. Uh, plus one bonus to Illusion School spells, and plus two bonus on saving throws against Illusion School spells. Uh, well, that's not too bad. Unfortunately, we have bracelet. No, we don't. We don't have all bracelet. What do you have? Plus five. Mm, that's not too bad, actually. Huh. Let's go with you. You get those. No, you don't? Why? What? Oh. They go over there. Well, I don't know what you had. That worries me. 
It goes over here. Okay. That doesn't worry me as much. Uh, do you like that? No. Yeah. Not being able to, like, uh, itemization. I always have problem in every game. Uh, I always have problems, I should say, in every game with itemization. So, it's, uh, also have, I'm, I am, I'm having problems with these things. Uh, I, I always, well, not, a, not every game. It's just that, I, I don't know, itemization is so important. Uh, we never pass these. And, uh, I, I always, like, see where it should be better. Well, the thing is, it isn't necessarily better. It's just more in, in line with what I expect itemization to be like in games like these. There really is no reason for us to be this late into the game and still have empty slots, is what I mean. And, uh... Oh, that goes back over there. Hmm, interesting. Uh, and I think the reason why I don't have empty slots is because I need to buy the items. Location is not available. Rushlight fields. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. We came back over here. That's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, we're going over here. Try Travel there. We're going right yonder. We got a big road over here, so that probably means that we can... Do you want to enter this location? Pitax. A whole army of mean-looking guards awaited us at Pitax's gates. They were led by a pompous buffoon named Walsh Selloway, a Pitaxian magistrate, no less. Leave now, your highness. King Irovetti's orders, he said. We looked at each other and um, politely asked Walsh to let us enter. Alas, one can't get anything in this life with the help of mere politeness. The ma Certainly not you, Lindsay. The magistrate didn't even bother answering, but his eyes grew even more in impudent and his smile more contemptuous. And then we um, told Walsh we needed to discuss a few things with him regarding the river pirates. The river pirates are Pitax's concern, not yours. You would do better to mind your own kingdom, your highness, Walsh said, taking a step backward to, the clo to be closer to his soldiers, realizing we wouldn't get anything else from him. For now, we kept what remained of our... Oh, it's this... Oh, wait, that's interesting. It's Pitax. It's like a full-on... Cool, I like that. Anyway, moving back home then. Uh, I, I should point out that impudence uh, it requires uh, stationery. Is it stationery? Is it... What, you, hmm, what What? should I... How should I put it? Basically, you can't be impudent to your inferiors. And uh, that means that if you are going to uh, consider somebody to be impudent, then, uh, again in the same spot? Then, uh, if you're gonna consider somebody to be impudent, then you're, you're... It requires that you consider yourself above them. Or that you are indeed above them. Why are things so shiny right now? Well, I guess we just have... The things that are very shiny. Uh, I am... Very confused. I think it might be because of all the reloading. Because I am reloading a lot, by the way. Uh, and we got a new kingdom thingy. Hmm, population census. This one. Uh, let's see, that is a very difficult check. Kanara can do it with a crisis thingy. Please don't fail that. Uh, and we have Lindsay. Yes, the good news from Lindsay. I am, can't, I'm looking forward to that. I can't wait. I can, and I'm not. Actually, well, I don't know. I am looking forward because I want to see if it is indeed good news. Because it probably is. Honestly, like, I'm, that was a hiccup, by the way. That's why my voice went all weird. Um... Are we? We're not slowed. No, no, no. It's just the forest. Um, I I said that in a sort of joking manner, and it, it is as a joke. I it's it's meant to provoke amusement, uh, but also it is. Um, I'm pretty sure it is going to be good news. A promising magician and scientist has arrived in the region from abroad. Abroad, sorry. He is looking for a quiet place where he won't won't be disturbed, and uh, I can solve that easily with our storyteller, who is very good at. Uh, that and also two people like that so going back to, yeah the, I, I, I rambled about the itemization I think I've rambled about the uh, the itemization before as well but it's just things that it's like it's like the um, the lack of options oh I shouldn't do this I should uh, I should yeah let's do it from here like the lack of options in uh, in choosing which advisor takes care of what I think it would be very easily solved by 
uh, removing all the time constraints. Just ne don't have the time constraints. Things are resolved instantly, and the, the kingdom management would be a lot better. They, they It honestly would be a lot better. There's no reason why things take so long. I mean, there is a reason, obviously, from a sort of realistic perspective, but from a gameplay perspective, honestly, it just takes away from, from the fun. Lindsay's cheeks are flushed and she's out of breath. It seems she must have run all the way to the throne room from the front door. Disaster! It's a disaster, your highness! Um, what is it, Lindsay? The whole kingdom's on fire! Well, metaphorically speaking, and some of it literally. First of all, we've got armed gangs ran ranging along our border with pitaks, robbing and killing people, destroying food stores and damaging any property they come across. Second, there are um, sudden and inexplicable monster attacks being reported all throughout our your lands. And third, there are people out sowing dissent with rumors and songs, even handing pamphlets out, mocking your failure to fix things, and encouraging the citizens to pledge fealty to Irovetti instead. Our governors are panicking. Our governors are... Okay, well, it's a good thing our... Uh, what? Anyway. They've had to use all the funds we budgeted them from the treasury on preventing riots in mass hysteria. Several... Yeah, they, they're, they're just uh, investing in those television ads. Several provinces have already refused to attempt gathering taxes from the people, claiming that just trying would be tantamount to suicide. We don't have much time. There may be no troops marching among against us, but more of our regions are under attack each day. We may not have catapults firing on the walls of our capital, but there's no doubt we're under siege. There are no battlefronts and no battalions, but there are plenty of victims. We've been attacked without reason and without declaration of war. We only... We have only one option, to kick Irovetti's ass and show everyone in the ki in the river kingdoms who's the master around here. Um, that's certainly one way of doing it, and the reason why I said it was good news, because that means I can uh, kill Irovetti in the face. Um, why am I... Mm, let's not say that. So you think Irovetti is behind all this? Who else could it be? Bandit attacks are increasing along our border with Pitax and the Bards spouting negative propaganda against you are singing the praises of Irovetti at the same time. Hell, he even invented, invited you to the Rushlight Tournament for the sole purpose of mocking you, even though I wrote the opposite of that. Who else would backstab their... Also, it wasn't that. that we didn't get that impression. Uh, who else would backstab their opponents in such a, a low, conniving way? This is just like him, that nasty, slimy, fathead prick. If he were here right now, Lindsay clutches the air as though gripping the throat of an invisible enemy. She's, uh, she's bloodthirsty. Um, it's, uh... Wait, wasn't she lawful? Isn't she lawful good? I thought she was lawful good. Anyway, she sounds chaotic. Anyway, um, why am I just hearing about this now? At first, no one thought these is though these isolated events could be part of some conspiracy. Even now, it's likely few have figured it out. But these events have all developed too quickly, and in, in what seems like a con concerted effort, as though someone were pulling the strings from behind a curtain. And there's no more than enough. And there's more than enough evidence trying to the tying these strings to Pitax. Do we have any defi definitive proof that would allow us to formally expose Irovetti? Not yet, but I'm sure the agents we he hired will have something we can use. It's a good idea, though. Expose Irovetti, show the whole world the dirty game he's playing. It would definitely help us when you deal with his spies. Be sure to keep your eyes open. Well, I thought the stolen lands were used to dealing with bandits. The thing is, they may be dressed like bandits, and also do banditry, but they're behaving comp... Oh, they're not doing banditry? But they're behaving completely differently. Bandits wouldn't decimate the peasant population, burn their fields, and poison... They're dressed like bandits. I'm just now realizing. I don't... I, bandits have uniforms. But the but burn their fields and poison their wells, and then there wouldn't be anyone to extort next time. Much more profitable to just shake them down every once in a while. That's why local thugs tend to be well-known, but nobody recognizes these new ones. And all that's left behind after their raids are corpses and scorched fields. It's gotten to the point that our bandits are fighting these outsiders. Some of the villagers... Uh, villages are gathered even gathering weapons and supplies to help our bandits because they at least let them live. 
but th they, they're still losing. Why are these bandits? Why are these our bandits? What do you mean, our bandits? These are... What are we talking about here, bandits? It's like, what? That, that's just a career that they follow? It's just, ah, I'm just a bandit. You know, been, been a bandit for 20 years now. So I'm not about to stop. And they're killing my livelihood, these other bandits are. I mean, they look like bandits anyway. But it's not that they're bandits. It's just that, you know, it's the clothing. It's fine. Anyway, I'm bandit, sir. Yes, sir. -y. So that's just who... That's how our... I, we're our bandits. You know what you should do? The guard should hire our bandits. That's which is good. It's that's how it works. Yeah, that's how bandits. That's how the words. Uh, what do we know about the monster attacks? That oh yeah, because those are also related. The reports are controversial, says Lindsay. They talk about things you wouldn't even hear in fairy tales. Educated wyverns, who apparently like tea and fine literature. Uh, trolls wearing armor, which we have seen plenty of. Even undetectable goblin ghosts, which makes sense because they're ghosts. But anyway, all the testimonies agree on one thing. They emerge in small groups literally from nowhere, in the middle of a field in the center of a city square, on fortress parapets. One in reported monsters rushing into the common hall from bedrooms and storerooms, and in a temple nearby, the monsters fell down on the heads of the praying congregation, breaking through the roof with a wild boar, or li with a wild boar. Just a few hours ago, a messenger showed up at the castle with a missive offering the services of a group of rangers who specialize in investigating mysterious cases similar to these. For a small fee, they're ready to facilitate establishing the nature of these inexplicable events. I suppose we should take them up on it. I have no idea how else we'd go about fighting the source of these attacks. Do we know who's spreading the propaganda? Yes and no, she says. Which... The, the question is, do we know? Let's find out. The bard's handing the pamphlets out and singing slander about you... Uh, it is slander. About you have been seen in the city streets, but none have been caught. Obviously, some place in Pitax is training these people and printing up uh, their pamphlets. And judging... By, printing their pamphlets up. And judging by the style and quality of the texts, someone from Pitax's Academy of Grand Arts was tasked with this mudslinging... I would recognize their style of verse from a mile away. If I were you, that's where I'd start looking for agitators. You know what this what you know what would solve this? You know what what a republic. That's what would solve. I mean, I'm not saying abolish the, the monarchy and just stop being queen cuz the, otherwise the name of the game wouldn't do very well, but it would work. Uh, since we apparently have an educated population who can read uh, and is susceptible to propaganda, uh, although Propaganda can't doesn't necessarily have to be in written form or you know in a way that it, it would have to be written form. Uh, there's also you know you can you can just have people say things. Um, it's um, I'm thinking the role. I have never read anything specific. There's probably books about it about the role of propaganda in medieval ages. And when I say medieval ages, I I do mean medieval ages. This is a medieval setting. There's there's no way around it. This is not um, any pretense of of, uh, of anything post the, the 16th century in this setting is is uh, misguided. Um, if there is indeed any anything, it's just misguided. It's just uh, either it's it's like a, a mixture of things or, or it isn't. But it, or or it's just misguided. I mean, um, the role of propaganda in, in the medieval ages, that's a weird thing. Because the, the, the reason why propaganda works in our uh, age, or at least in the last uh, three centuries, um, which would be, you know, the contemporary age, um, which, you know, anyway. Uh, the reason why it works is because the people have a... Uh, an inc I say the people, I mean the, 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 the lower classes, anyway, have an increasingly higher... Um, an increasingly higher, uh, uh, what's the word, sort of, it's power, I suppose, in a way. Because if you don't have power, propaganda doesn't really matter. You, you can think all, all you like about your rulers, but if you can't do anything about it, it doesn't matter. Um, but, uh, and, and, dep and depends with the country, it depends on what year or what century you even we're talking about in real history. But in this setting, what would propaganda actually entail... Um, I, like they wouldn't pay taxes. Is like that's that that's the only thing that that um, 
That's the only thing that looks like... Uh, to be the, the, the reason why we don't want this to happen. Because the people can't do anything. The, the people didn't... Did they put... No, they didn't put me in place. They didn't crown me. It wasn't... Was it? Nah, I don't remember exactly uh, the, the details. But it's not like... You know, they don't have power. They have no power. So they can think ill all they like. They can be mad that they, that they don't, uh, take, uh, that they have to pay the taxes. But who, why, like, the reason why people pay taxes in a setting like this is one of two things: either they're, uh, either I do something with those taxes, and basically they they see that, oh, well, if I want this to happen, like I don't know the. the Maintenance of public waterways, which is a pretty historically very important, um, uh, very important uh, thing to do, or maybe even roads, which is less important but tends to be important as well, depending on the context. Uh, but pu public waterways, maintenance of that. Either they just like, oh well, I, I guess the crown has a new fountain or whatnot, or just look at the how pretty that that uh, aqueduct over there is. So I'm gonna pay my taxes, um, or they pay the taxes because they're forced to because there's a guard. And that's why it's the, the the who has the the who has the monopoly on violence, um, as it were, because the guard is an implicit violence. Um, you know, you don't you don't have to fight the guard, but you know, if, if you don't pay the taxes, the guard will arrest you. Um, but yeah, so yeah, who has the guards? And so this whole thing about they they don't even want to collect taxes. Why don't they? I would imagine it's because they don't do it with the guard. But then if they don't do it with a guard, then it means that I'm maintaining the public aqueducts and all that. Which I don't think is the case, honestly. <laughs> anyway, we're out of time for the day, so uh, we're going to continue rambling about this in the next episode. For right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Pathfinder Kingmaker. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment. Like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.